Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have all of the best Illithid brain powers and trust me there's a lot of useful stuff here that can really enhance your gameplay and make even some battles in tactician mode a breeze together with even out of battle utility effects and I'll cover everything the normal ones the middle ones the ultimate ones at the edge but first Let's just do a quick section on how to actually get started with your Illithid powers, right? Because even the basic ones will not be unlocked at the very start of the game. And here's how it goes. Now, you will not be able to access your Illithid powers until you complete two steps. First, you need to pick one of the Illithid dialogue options, and you'll get plenty even at the early game. If you don't know where to get them, just go west from the Druid Grove, where you'll meet some goblins, such as the Blighted Village or the Goblin Camp, and you'll get your first Illithid dialogue options. Afterwards, just rush for the entrance of the Goblin Camp, very near, right? Once again to the west, this time of the Goblin Village. Don't even need to fight any battle if you use the Illithid dialogue options. And right at the bridge to the entrance, you'll get a cutscene. Afterwards, you can just go for a long rest, at which point your dream visitor will appear and tell you to accept your potential and use the mind for your powers. At this point is when you can start consuming the parasites to unlock all of your powers, well most of them anyways. While the parasites are usually spread through the map, if you want to do it very fast and very early, outside of the three you get at the goblin camp, you can also find one extremely close to the starter area, once again to the west of the Druid Grove, where you'll meet a certain dying NPC called Edwin. Just let him die and loot his parasite for yourself. Also, be absolutely sure to use the big machine at the GIF Crash Infirmary map area, because by making all of the dialogue checks you'll get now, you'll be able to acquire the extremely powerful Awakened Passive which lets you use all of the Mind Flayer powers we are about to cover now as a bonus action. Something extremely handy. First, the brain powers at the outer edges will remain locked until you reach Act 3, and you do have to pick a certain choice there, which is rather obvious when it comes, to accept more Mind Flayer power. My favorite picks early are usually the passives, right? Because, well, by virtue of being passives, they are always in effect. There's other ones that are, for example, on short or long rest, which is kind of annoying, although some are definitely worth it. Anyways, the first pick is Favorable Beginnings. It's just at the beginning, but it's actually one of the best ones, by far. The first attack roll or ability check you make against any target will also get a bonus equal to your proficiency. The best part is how prevalent this is, right? Because it's not once per battle or once per rest, it's once per new target. For example, all the nearby enemies here have the same amount of AC, 13. The main reason I have 80% against two of them and 95% against the other one is because I've already used my favorable beginnings to attack the two other targets. Because this is a new target, I'll get to apply the bonus again from my first hit. And there we go, favorable beginnings. And it even works for dialogue checks too. Even better, because you also often make just one dialogue check per NPC, right? Meaning you'll always have favorable beginnings on. It's definitely the best first pick. Second, it's directly tied to another amazing Illithid Brain Power, Luck of the Far Realms, which is my preferred second pick. When you make a successful attack roll against the foe, you can change that hit into a critical hit. This is just once per battle, but well, having the ability to turn an attack into a critical is amazing, right? Third, we have Ability Drain. Once per turn, so quite useful too, whenever you make an attack roll, the attack will automatically reduce the enemy's corresponding ability by minus one. The ability is tied to the attack, for example, for strength weapons, its strength, for ranged weapons, dexterity, and spells, your spellcasting ability, although it won't really stack on the same enemy. Because most enemies, just like your characters, tend to have even scores, let's say we hit an enemy that has 16 dexterity with a ranged attack. It will now have 15. 
By making an even score into an odd one, they'll now take a penalty to their armor class, initiative and also range to hit and damage. Quite useful, right? The only annoying part is you need to pick Psionic Overload first, which isn't that good. I mean, your attacks will deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage, but you'll also take 1d4 psychic every turn. If you have a lot of attacks, it's certainly a lot better, right? Because you can just heal the amount later. In any case, we do need it for Ability Drain. Another absolutely busted brain power is Perilous Takes. It's once per long rest, but the effect is definitely worth it. This is the ultimate boss killer. There's no saving throw, and whatever enemy you cast this onto will now become vulnerable to all damage sources, right? Which means twice as much damage taken from anything in the game. The only downside is so minor that it might as well not be there. Whenever they attack you, they'll also be healed by 2d8. But who cares, right? It's double damage taken from all of your allies' attacks. Even better when you have summons, right? Because you're gonna have like 30 plus all dealing double damage before the enemy can do anything. It's, like I said, the best ability against bosses and tough targets, even if it's single target per long rest only. The requirement is transfuse health, which I'm afraid is rather poor. But frankly, Perilous is so good that is definitely worth the price of admission. For another amazing brain power, and this is also one of the ultimate ones, we have Call the Weak. It's a toggable passive feature, so always in effect. And here's how it works. Whenever you bring a creature down to fewer hit points than your number of evolved illithid powers, that's each of the powers we picked here, they'll automatically be instantly killed and all nearby enemies will take 1 to 4 psychic damage. It might not seem like much too, but this becomes stronger the more brain powers you have unlocked, which is why I also love hoarding the brain parasites just for my main character, right? Eventually you can have so many nice brain powers that Code the Weak will instantly kill enemies around 20 hit points or so, which just happens to be, what, 1 fourth, 1 fifth of the total hit points of many enemies even on late game tactician mode. It also hits enemies only as far as the minor damage, and the best part is it can chain, right? For example, if this leftover psychic damage leaves another enemy at the right threshold, they'll be instantly killed too, so it's quite efficient. Even better for area of effect abilities that damage multiple enemies at once, because it can then truly chain all over the place. And well, who doesn't hate having an enemy survive with, let's say, 5 to 10 hit points? With this, you can overcome that. The price of admission is Concentrated Blast, which ain't really useful, I'm afraid. But Ko is worth it. Psionic Backlash can be good too, after all, it will be unlocked if you're going for Code the Weak. And whenever an enemy within 9 meters of you casts a spell, it doesn't have to target your character themselves. You can use a reaction, nice, right, because it doesn't really cost anything important, to inflict 1d4 psychic damage to the caster per spell level. It's not amazing damage or anything, but it can help, especially if it works to proc Code the Weak, right? Shield of Thralls can be useful too, after all it's unlocked by something you already have, Transfuse Health. It's just not exactly a must-have, unlike a few of the other ones like Perilous Stake, Luck of the Far Realms, Favorable Beginnings, Code the Weak and so on. It's once per short rest, and it can grant either yourself or an ally 10 temporary hit points, which is nice for some classes that don't have temporary HP on demand from abilities and spells. Plus, the shield will also burst when this 10 HP is lost, stunning nearby foes. On an intelligence save. And intelligence is one of the best saves because enemies tend to dump it, just like your characters, right? The same with charisma, it's one of the lowest saves all around for enemies. For other Mind Flayer powers before we get into the ultimate ones, Stage Fright can help a bit, it's not a must have, right? But it can force enemies on a Wisdom saving throw to have disadvantage on attack rolls and also take 2 to 12 psychic damage whenever they miss. The problem is if they succeed on an attack roll, well, they'll recover from the effect. But this can be a nice form of crowd control for characters that can't really cast spells for that purpose like Martial, Fighters, and so on. Charm, well, it can help a bit, right? If the enemy attacks you, you can charm them as a reaction to prevent them from attacking you again. Once again, it's mostly here because it's a reaction, so it won't cost anything important. 
Now let's at last get into the ultimate Mind Flayer powers at the edge of the brain. And trust me, a lot of them are extremely powerful, as one might expect. First, you'll always have Flight Unlocked, which is busted good. It's permanent, always in effect, and essentially replaces your character's movement with Flight, which is way, way better, right? With Flight, you can ignore elevations and so on, choke points too, and just move your character wherever you want. As far as the ones we have to unlock, let's start with one of my favorites, Black Hole. Black Hole has two benefits, it's per short rest, but on the same battle you can actually cast it five whole times. It's just that once battle ends, you'll need to short rest to get the uses again. And as the name itself implies, you'll get to choose a point on the map and all enemies in a huge area of effect, it's enemy only, no friendly fire, will be sucked towards the center. There is no resistance to this effect at all. But if they are, let's say, on different elevations, or there's something blocking them, even minor objects, well, they'll be sucked just a bit, but won't go to the center. It doesn't need any saying that gathering enemies together is absolutely amazing for follow-ups with, well, area of effect spells, of course, both damage and crowd control. There's another great benefit to Black Hole, however. If the enemies fail an intelligence save, they'll be slowed for one round. Slow is one of the best debuffs, right? Reduces enemy AC by minus two, limits their attack and movement, it's great overall. As I said before, there is no resistance to being sucked by the Black Hole, only for the slow secondary effect. Definitely a must have. Now, to unlock Black Hole, a good thing is unlike the earlier powers, if you unlock one of the nearby Outer Edge Ultimate Powers, you'll also get to unlock the next one. For example, Last Big Charm and Psionic Dominance. We also get to choose Black Hole, which is what I recommend you do, because this place is not really good unless you are a character focused into throwing enemies, such as Warlock with Repelling Blast. And as I said, to get into Black Hole, you can choose Psionic Dominance, which is amazing too. Sadly, it's only once per long rest, I believe. But it kind of works like the counter spell, Magic. Whenever an enemy within 18 meters targets you with a spell of a level that is lower or equal to your proficiency bonus, at this point it's like plus 4, you can use a reaction to completely nullify the spell. The only downside is, like I said, it's not once per battle, it's a lot less uses than that. It's restricted by resting. Edithid Expertise is also another favorite of mine, plus you'll always have it unlocked if you grab Favorable and Luck, two amazing brain powers anyways. What it does is, you'll gain Expertise in all of the main dialogue skill checks, Persuasion, Deception and Intimidation. To put it simply, by just having this and other bonuses like Favorable Beginnings and the Guidance spell, you will be able to easily make any dialogue check late game, even if you absolutely dumped your Charisma. It's that good. And well, who doesn't want to make dialogue checks, right? And right next to it, we have another ultimate brain power, Fracture Psych. On a failed intelligence saving throw, the enemy's armor class will be reduced by minus one. I know it might not seem like much, but look, Baldur's Gate 3 is a low numbers game, alright? It's not like Pathfinder where we have a hundred plus armor class. Just a minus one can help. Especially because if the enemy dies while under this effect, you can then use Shatter Psych on another target, and this is double the effect. For minus two instead of minus one, and the chain can keep on going, so it's quite efficient at least for one battle, because to cast it on following ones you'll need a short rest. Better than a long rest, of course. And don't forget, the more brain powers we are getting, including ultimate powers, the stronger your Cold of Weak ability will become. For another amazing ultimate power, we have Free Cast. This essentially lets you cast almost any ability, including spells, for free, assuming they cost a resource, right? And it will refresh on both a short or long rest, so quite useful to have. It's even better for, let's say, level 6 spell slots, because you only have a single one, even at level 12. And amusingly enough, I'm pretty sure this is bugged at the moment, 
from what I have tested at least, it's permanent, right? Meaning, you, well, you have infinite spells because of it. I'm sure they're going to fix it eventually, but even the fixed version is still amazing. Mind Sanctuary can have its uses too. It lets you change between both actions and bonus actions. So you can, for example, cast two spells at once that would normally require normal actions, right? Because you'll get to use one as a bonus action. Only recharges after a long rest though, so be sure to save it for important battles. Lastly, we have Mind Blast, which is the classic, infamous Mind Flayer special ability, right? You'll fire a cone with rather decent reach, it only hits enemies, and on an intelligent save, if they fail, they'll be stunned together with some nice psychic damage. But it's mostly for stunning, although it only lasts one round. Still, I mean, what Mind Flayer doesn't have a Mind Blast, right? The other ones like Displacer Beast Shape and Absorb Intellect aren't as useful, at least not as the ones I've just covered. But you know, the more brain powers you have, the more OP your Code the Weak ability will become, so you might as well get everything you can. Now, as far as other party members, assuming you don't wanna hoard everything for the main character, honestly, favorable beginnings at least is what I'd say is a must have, right? Because for just one brain parasite, it's a really big benefit together with Luck of the Far Realms. The others you can just save for the main character themselves. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my best Illithid Mind Flayer Brain Powers guide. If you found it useful as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member if you can, I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, see you next time friends!